Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Boycott Kills Bud Light. One year later, sales never came back. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. From the Harvard Business Review, lessons from the Bud Light boycott one year later. From Fox News, Bud Light hasn't fully rebounded as one-year mark of Dylan Mulvaney fiasco approaches. And from Ad Age, Miller Light revives tastes great, less filling, why big beer is going retro. With the light beer market in upheaval and share up for grabs, nostalgia is hot. From the Harvard Business Review lessons from the Bud Light boycott one year later. The Harvard Business Review does have some excellent articles on marketing and some very strong analysis. They did take a very serious look at Bud Light, and they know what we all know. These idiots have destroyed this brand forever. It will not grow. It will shrink until it's like some kind of small regional brand. But the bridges that they burned with Dylan Mulvaney will never be restored. It doesn't matter what they spend. It doesn't matter what money they give to the UFC. It's not going to help them. Why did the Bud Light boycott affect the beer's brand sales? when many other boycotts have only marginal or short-term impact. An analysis of sales data confirms that Bud Light suffered a sustained downturn in sales, more pronounced in Republican-leaning counties in the U.S., and it explains several factors that determine how vulnerable a brand is to a boycott. Boycotts can have a bigger impact when a product is more substitutable, when it is more visible, and when consumers feel psychological ownership over it. Psychological ownership is a comfortable connection with a brand that signifies something about your identity. It doesn't mean that you're Mr. or Mrs. Bud Light. It just means that you're a normal part of social society when you're sitting there and you're drinking something that's relatively popular. However, when Bud Light decided they were going to infect it with Dylan Mulvaney, they ruined the brand forever. They could have apologized. They could have explained Dylan Mulvaney is not our new spokesmodel for the brand. They didn't do that. They sat quietly while social media completely caught fire and their customers became more and more insulted. Taking a social media stance has become a rite of passage for contemporary brands that are hoping to resonate with younger, more socially conscious audiences. In April 2023, Bud Light tried its hand at this strategy, collaborating with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney on a social media promotional post. This sparked backlash from several prominent conservatives, leading many conservative figures and groups to call for a boycott of Bud Light. And it wasn't just Bud Light. There was so much nonsense going on. Dylan Mulvaney also was a promotional representative for Nike's female athletic wear, for bras, workout gear. People were already annoyed with Dylan Mulvaney, but of course, annoyed with this whole woke progressive nonsense being pushed through society. At the point where it got to Bud Light, people had just had enough of this. Although several brands like Nike, Pepsi, and Goya have faced criticism for their positions on social issues in recent years, the controversy surrounding these brands quickly fell out of the public eye. Academic research measuring the sales impact of boycott and boycott movements has also found small, short-lived effects for the brands involved. Thus, few anticipated the sustained hit to sales that Bud Light has endured. Here's what the article covers. They document the sales impact of the Bud Light boycott using a representative 150,000 household panel from Numerator, a data analytics and market research company that sources purchase data directly from consumers. They measured changes in Bud Light sales in dollars and purchase incidents, whether a consumer's bought the brand after the controversy relative to Bud Light consumption patterns and seasonal trends in 2021 and 2022. Their findings indicate that the three months following the controversy, Bud Light sales and purchase incidents were about 28% lower, that would be by volume, than the same period in prior years. Notably, this initial decline was more pronounced in predominantly Republican counties, as measured by the 2020 presidential vote than predominantly Democratic counties. Both sales and purchase incidents decreased by about 32% in more Republican counties versus 22% in more Democratic counties. However, unlike with other consumer boycotts, Bud Light has not bounced back. The sales decline persisted for close to eight months, with sales and purchase incidents down by 32%, in the fourth quarter of 2023. Interestingly, the sales decline in Democratic counties became even larger over time, shrinking the gap between Republican and Democratic counties. This additional decline in sales is likely a result of retailers and distributors reducing shelf space for Bud Light, illustrating how boycotts can lead to a negative feedback loop. 
And if you follow my channel, we've been covering this since May of last year, explaining that retailers, even if you make the beer free, they will not stock products that do not sell to consumers. They will wait a little while, they will see how things go, but eventually with declining sales, they're gonna dump the product. At least they're going to reduce how much they're gonna carry up the product. Taps have been pulled out of bars all over the place. They've lost so many taps for Bud Light, they will never get that market share back in restaurants and bars. And that's even worse than a reduction in shelf space, because if you don't have it on tap, no one's gonna buy it on tap. What started as a consumer-led boycott generated downstream adjustments from retailers and distributors. The supply side adjustments hurt the brand's visibility and further exacerbated the negative impact on Bud Light's performance. And that was also warned by former Anheuser-Busch president of distribution, Anson Fredericks, who said, if they don't fix this, and this was last summer, if they don't get this fixed, if they don't apologize, if they don't do whatever it takes to win the trust back with consumers, they will lose massive amounts of shelf space. And of course, that's what's happened. Who were the consumers behind the boycott and how have they adjusted their purchase behavior? To study the substitution behavior of consumers, we identify Bud Light loyalists in the numerator household panel as frequent beer drinkers who purchased Bud Light more than any other brand in the first four months of 2023. Comparing purchase behavior post-controversy to the same period in 2022, we estimated that in the three months immediately succeeding the boycott, 15% of previously loyal Bud Light customers shifted their primary spending to other brands as part of the boycott. Of those boycotters, 38% transitioned to Coors, 23% to Miller, 14% to Yingling, and 7% to Modelo. The remaining boycotters distributed their spending across various other beer brands. So why has Bud Light endured more sustained sales decreases than other brands that have been the target of recent boycotts? We see several reasons. Polarization of consumer base. One important factor is the degree of polarization in the brand's existing consumer base and how the views of the core base accord or conflict with the brand's stance on social or political issues. Does the existing customer base skew more liberal or more conservative? Or does it represent an even split of Americans? Or if you do a search for Dylan Mulvaney sexy and you come up with what I came up with, Dylan Mulvaney hot shots from TMZ, this is what they're expecting you to buy into when you buy into the Bud Light brand. This has to be sexy for you. This has to be, wow, Dylan Mulvaney, that's an attractive person. I'd like to jump into a hot tub with Dylan Mulvaney. That's what's required to support the Bud Light brand. Because if you're seen in public drinking a Bud Light, this is what people think when they see the Bud Light brand. Because that's what Anheuser-Busch wanted. They thought if they violated the trust of their customers to push their political agenda, that they could get people to embrace the idea of Dylan Mulvaney being attractive and beautiful and someone you'd want to associate yourself with in public so that you could be out there promoting their agenda publicly whenever you went out to drink, whenever you bought their product. That didn't work. It was way, way, way a bridge too far. Brands that have many close substitutes are easier to boycott because there are many similar alternatives that consumers can switch to. By contrast, brands that are more unique and do not have good substitutes are harder to boycott because consumers must give up more by switching to an alternative or ceasing consumption in the category altogether. In their previous analysis of the Goya Foods boycott and counter boycott movements supporting the brand, we saw more evidence of political consumerism in more commoditized categories like canned beans and less evidence of switching in categories where Goya offered differentiated products like their unique spice blends in the herbs and seasonings category. In the case of Bud Light, the presence of many other light beers on the shelf is compounded by the brand's lack of taste differentiation from its closest competitors. Blind taste tests on social media show light beer drinkers struggling to distinguish Bud Light from Coors Light and Miller Light. The similarity in flavor profiles among these leading light beers suggests that for consumers, the decision to boycott Bud Light by switching to an alternative like Coors Light or Miller Light involves minimal sacrifice in terms of taste preference. Observability of consumption. Some consumers may be intrinsically driven to participate in a boycott, while others may participate in order to outwardly show their support for a set of issues. Thus, the observability of consumption may be an important factor that could determine the strength of boycotting. Also, of course, to be seen drinking a Bud Light says something about you. It says you're into this. It says you want this, and you're interested in this. And that's not something people want to associate with. All people wanted to do was to buy a light beer. They didn't want to make political statements. They didn't want to be seen as endorsing alternative lifestyles. But that wasn't good enough for Anheuser-Busch. They had to push it on people. Based on a survey and verified purchase data of numerator panelists, 
who had consumed Bud Light before the controversy, they found that respondents who identified as social drinkers were more likely to have ceased consuming Bud Light following the controversy relative to respondents who mostly drink beer in private. These results suggest that brands primarily consumed in private may be more insulated from consumer backlash. Beer is consumed both in public and private settings, making it more susceptible. Consumer behavior research has shown that individuals often use products to signal their type to others and psychological ownership can lead individuals to perceive their possessions as forming part of their identity or an extension of themselves. While psychological ownership can benefit brands by increasing a sense of loyalty, consumers may feel disrespected when a brand with which they identify acts in contrast with their values. Thus, brands that consumers are known to identify with may prefer to take extra care. Bud Light has historically invested heavily in advertising campaigns, which have built a strong sense of psychological ownership with their customers that led many to feel personally affronted by the brand supporting an issue they did not agree with. In the survey of numerator panelists, more than 60% of the respondents that decreased their consumption of Bud Light after the controversy attributed the reason to the brand's values or brand image. Of course, it was the brand image. People don't want to be associated with that. Normal people do not want to be. People that are willing to be associated with it, that's fine. It's an extreme minority of people. Many people also, they're not plugged into online. They're not plugged into media. They don't watch the news. Those people, they didn't even know what was going on. I've talked to a few of those people, and I'm always surprised you run across one of them, but they do exist. And of course, you're not going to lose the business that you were getting from those people because they're not plugged in whatsoever. Of course, engagement can prolong the attention. News coverage can help fuel the flames of a boycott movement. Instead of remaining silent after the controversy broke out, Bud Light eventually addressed the controversy publicly and later put the managers in charge of the campaign on leave. These follow-up actions may have inadvertently prolonged the media coverage of the boycott, keeping the issue top of mind with consumers and contributing to longer-lasting changes in behavior. There was a lot of media coverage of the issue. There was a lot of interest in it. It really was social media. Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, people making comments, people staying interested in it. And once Dylan Mulvaney was so closely associated with their brand, that was the end of their brand. It's Dylan Mulvaney now. It's a transgender beer and that's fine, but that's what it is. It's not for everyone anymore. It's for a very tiny part of the population. It's not mainstream anymore. It's not for everyone anymore. While most retailers are willing to tolerate some short-lived sales fluctuations, longer-term changes in demand often lead to a redistribution of scarce shelf space in stores. This supply-side response can further accelerate sales decreases driven by consumers. Indeed, Bud Light has lost shelf space at retailers and tap handles at bars, which is driving some of the longer-term sales declines. This example shows that the supply-side reaction can amplify the effect of a boycott. As Bud Light lost visibility and accessibility in stores and bars, the opportunity for sales further diminished, creating a feedback loop that deepened the sales decline. In the aftermath of the Bud Light controversy, many consumers' brand marketing departments have become acutely aware of the potential pitfalls of taking stances on controversial social issues and have become fearful of experiencing a similar backlash and the accompanying financial and reputational costs. And from Fox News, Bud Light hasn't fully rebounded as one-year mark of Dylan Mulvaney fiasco approaches. It's a very stubborn boycott, and they can't get this back now because the shelf space has been so damaged. Even if people wanted to buy this beer, it's not going to be available in the same amount that it used to be. If Bud Light is not widely available on shelves and kept available for sale, if it's not in taps at bars, it's not going to be sold at the same level ever again. Bud Light has struggled to win back many of its once loyal drinkers as the one-year mark since the disastrous pact with transgender influencer Dylan Mulvaney approaches. The drinkers that they lost last April and May have not come back at any discernible rate. It's a very stubborn boycott. The likes of, I don't think we've ever seen before, Beer Business Daily publisher Harry Schumacher told Fox News Digital. Schumacher went on to say the ordeal has been so prominent that its sales have entered the lexicon of Americans from all sides of the political spectrum. But when a brand does something that loses market share, you say, oh, it's a Bud Light moment, he said. We're sitting here a year later, and Bud Light's trends remain almost unchanged since they were last May, down in the 27% to 28% in volume. And in some places, it's certainly much more. I interviewed a local Bud Light beer distributor here. He told me sales are off 90%. He said it's not no 28% here locally. I'm on Long Island, New York. Schumacher noted that Anheuser-Busch was initially slow to respond to the backlash, and many within the industry assumed criticism of the Mulvaney drama would fizzle out after a few weeks. Things only got worse for the beer brand when it was subsequently revealed that Alyssa Heinersheed, 
who was the vice president of marketing at the time, had attacked its core consumers by saying Bud Light's past advertising was fratty and out of touch humor. Schumacher continues, they got all these blessings from these cultural figures on the right that they thought would, I think, help the trajectory of the brand. And you know, it's early, but so far it hasn't improved. Noting Anheuser-Busch also spent big money on a Super Bowl ad featuring NFL legend Peyton Manning that failed to move the needle. Anheuser-Busch has spent all the money. They've done all the right things, Schumacher said. They spent the money on the right things. And amazingly, it really hasn't affected the trend that much. It's unbelievable. Well, of course, they could start by apologizing and trying to rebuild their customers' trust, but they're not doing that. They're not interested in apologizing. They're not interested in decency. And that's why it's hard to see people going back and ever supporting a company like this again, much less just the Bud Light brand. Schumacher has run Beer Business Daily, a trade publication that covers the U.S. beer industry for 25 years and has never experienced anything like the Bud Light saga. He said the beer industry has been pretty steady for decades. And the last time a company saw such shifts in market share was back in the 1970s when Schlitz angered customers by putting out some inadequate batches of the product. But the Schlitz debate was roughly 50 years ago, and the industry has remained steady year to year until Mulvaney's video hits social media. Quote, we track market shares very closely over here. And to see these wild swings go back and forth, it's never happened before. So it's been really fascinating to cover it. You know, I've been doing this so long, Schumacher said, it's been a wild year. Of course, the Bud Light people got exactly what they deserved when they decided to violate their customers' trust. And then even after they did that, they didn't put people's concerns to rest. They made no sensible public comments. And they still have yet to apologize. And it's a year later. They've lost those drinkers. The only customers they will still have are the people interested in a Dylan Mulvaney branded beer and everything that implies about you when you drink it, as well as people that are not involved with media or advertising or social media whatsoever. And there certainly are some people out there, but of course they can't get back the 30% of the business that they've lost. And as there's less of this product on shelves, the less available it is, the less it's going to sell and sales will continue to decline. Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.